What's up top 10 fam, hope you're having an awesome day, I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video. So if Omegle was before your time, it was kind of like another version of chat roulette where you can basically chat or video chat with anyone else on the website at that time. Now, I spent a lot of time on there with my childhood best friends, I'm not gonna lie. My friend Jad had really long hair as a kid and we would basically just make him wear a bra and people legit thought he was a girl on there and it was actually just the funniest thing I've ever seen. Either way, but it's not all fun and games, the internet never is, especially when strangers are involved, so let's find out more. These are the top 10 scariest things seen on Omegle. Starting us off at number 10 is the obituary. So this one was shared by Kendallology on Reddit, and it's quite an experience to say the least. Now Kendall entered an Omegle chat with a girl that kept trying to convince her that the devil had raped Kendall. Now this girl knew exactly where Kendall lived, what her parents' names were, what she looked like, and more. As if that wasn't enough to make it creepy already. Now either way, throughout the conversation, the girl was trying to convince Kendall to join her in heaven by killing herself. She said that God spoke to her and said this was the only official way to get into heaven. She even explained how she planned to kill herself and said she was living underground working for the devil but in reality she belonged to God. Now Kendall smelled the bullshit straight away and was like I'm not gonna do this and the girl told her to think about it and that she would be online again the next night before killing herself. Now, the next day Kendall never found the girl again and the girl had told her her full name Name, so she decided to check the obituaries in the newspaper in her town and she was on it. She would slit her wrists in the tub and left her parents just to find her body. Now the whole time Kendall honestly thought this girl was screwing with her in the chat but she actually ended up going through with her own plan. Now the user stopped chatting to anyone online after that and I would expect that much. Oh, how can you do that? Coming in at number 9 is the homosexual dilemma. Now I made the title of this one provocative for a reason. Now this was shared by reddit user crazycatlady 6 years ago and I feel like talking to strangers online and then maybe meeting them is already dangerous for heterosexual people but when you're part of the LGBTQIA plus community it's that much more dangerous. Now I've heard stories of people part of the community even meeting up with people from dating apps and getting beat up and things like that and if you've seen Euphoria then even the transgender protagonist gets black blackmailed by someone she's speaking to online. So be careful everyone, but my LGBT plus people stay even more vigilant. Now into the actual story. So the user's best friend in high school was gay and so he would go on Omegle a lot to meet other gay men. He met this one guy claiming to be his age and they exchanged phone numbers and it was eventually found out that he was actually a 40 year old mentally unstable man. He lived a few hours away from them and had previously been in a mental institution so it was a situation and a half. But the man started sending the user's friend expensive ass gifts like a phone, a laptop, etc. But then he got creepier and started finding all of his friends on MySpace and messaging them when the boy wouldn't reply to him and would tell all of them what he wanted to do to their friend in sexually explicit detail. It wasn't all sexual though, at one point he even said he wanted to kill the friend and wear his skin. Now the user printed all of this out and showed it to the police who did nothing. After a while the man started even driving to their town and leaving flowers and notes in the boy's car. Now my problem with this story is the fact the boy was still clearly talking to him. Like if this man was messaging his friends when he didn't reply and obviously like they talked enough for the man to know what car he had. So I mean why didn't you stop talking to the man? At number 8 we have Sam. Reddit user the Samster was procrastinating doing his homework so of course he decided to go on a meagle. He posted screenshots of his conversation with the stranger on Reddit and the first thing they asked was ASL which stands for age, sex and location. Sam answered and so did the stranger and turns out they were from the same city. The stranger then goes it would be weird if we weren't Sam and keep in mind Omegle is anonymous and Sam never mentioned his name to the stranger. He then even sent Sam his IP address and said is that guitar just going to gather dust in the corner forever? Referencing the guitar in the corner of Sam's room that the stranger couldn't see since it wasn't a video call. Sam then tried to brush it off by saying they didn't have a guitar and then the stranger told them to play somewhere only we know. Sam then said they would call the police and the stranger replied saying mummy wouldn't like that. Sam replied saying she had died 7 years ago and the stranger said that's odd I was talking to her just a few minutes ago and at this point Sam disconnected. Now the whole thing was scary as hell the song the stranger mentioned was Sam and their mum's favourite song so it was like how does this person know all of this. They brushed it off and went into a new chat sharing with this new stranger about how they were just in a very creepy chat. The new stranger obviously asked what had happened and Sam explained how they just knew a lot about them to which the stranger said sorry about that Sam. 
Sam disconnected once again. Then every single time after that Sam entered a new chat, they were matched with someone that already knew their name and all their details. It was the same damn person every time and they couldn't figure out how to stop it. So they just stopped going on the site altogether. Good going Sam. Filling on number 7 slot is The Wife. Shared by Redditor Bone Gardener, she said when she was about 12 years old, she was bored and went on Omegle and started talking to a guy who claimed he was 16. Newsflash you guys, they are never 16. Ever. ID that mofo. Either way, she truly thought this guy was the real deal and could be her first potential boyfriend, so she gave him her phone number. He ended up calling her and immediately she knew something was off. His voice apparently sounded eerily like Michael Jackson's and she said hi and then quickly hung up. Which is generous. Honestly, I would have just cut that call straight up. Either way, she forgot about it until a few days later when her parents sat her down and asked if she had given her number out. This is the point the user was like wasted, like from GTA. Like she was a Busted. She admitted it obviously, and turns out the 16 year old boy was a 33 year old man who was married. The man's wife had found out he'd been flirting with this girl online and contacted her parents somehow, and then they didn't let her back on the internet for a while, and honestly, can't argue with that one. And this is so funny because this is actually semi happened to me, like very semi. So this subscriber added me on Facebook and was messaging me, and I never replied because they were creepy messages. And then this man's wife then messaged me on Facebook asking me how. I knew her husband. Like, lady, I don't know you or your husband. No. Now at number 6 is Alex. Now this one was shared by Meg Jones who said back when she was in grade 8, she had a sleepover with her friends Amy and Faith. Now Faith went to bed by 8 because according to Meg, she was a quote unquote loser and so her and Amy went on Omegle. So mind you, Meg was 12 at the time and Amy was 11, so not the right age to be talking to anybody on the internet. Either way, they started talking to a 13 year old called Alex and that conversation ended up lasting a few hours. Alex told them what school he went to and turns out he went to a middle school in the girls' area which was just crazy. He then asked what school they went to and Meg knew better and didn't want to tell him but dumbass Amy over here just straight up told him. Then when he asked for their address she went and told him that too because Amy apparently does not even have one single brain cell. A few minutes later Meg hung up on Alex and 10 minutes later Amy gets a text saying hey it's Alex because I don't know when but amidst her stupidity she must have given him her number because Amy is clearly on her bull more than I am. Either way, he continues texting her all night and is pissed about the fact they hung up on him. He then starts saying he knows their IP address and that he was going to find them and beat up Meg's boyfriend. If she didn't have one, but at 12 years old, that would still freak you out. Now Meg ended up blocking him from Amy's phone and that was the last of the Alex threats they got and good old Faith just slept through the whole thing. Honestly, in this scenario, who would want to be Faith? Me. Screw Amy, because she's dumb. I wouldn't want to be Meg either. Faith is the way to go. Coming in at number 5 are the details. This one comes from reddit user Ostrich out of nowhere who shared that they were on Omegle one day and was talking to a bunch of people and then started a new chat. You know sometimes you just get bored, you know sometimes you're just on to the next isn't it? On to the next! Guys that should be a motto if you're going through a breakup right now it's fine you know, on to the next, shoot your shot. Either way it's straight into the next conversation, the other person starts posting details about the user and it was personal things they shouldn't have known. Their name, the state they lived in, even their damn address. Now the user shat themselves and disconnected from the chat ASAP Rocky. They figured that it wasn't hard for someone to figure out their state if they knew their IP address, but that doesn't show you the person's name or address, so what was happening here? Like are we getting cyber stalked? Are we getting cyber killed? Someone let a ho know. I don't know. At number 4 is Silence. This one's from redditor American Recluse who said back in the day they were video chatting with people on Omegle and ended up entering a conversation with a couple from Holland. The couple lived in the same house but in different rooms and also lived with a bunch of other people in the house as well. The three of them were just talking and hanging out when things started getting weird. One of the couple's other roommates came in and was just acting strange. He first would just stare at them, then he started asking very intrusive questions so their conversation would stagger as the the girl spoke to the roommate trying to get him to go away. The roommate left and the user and the couple talked about how creepy the roommate was and whether they should do something about him or not. And keep in mind they're talking out loud on the video chat, not on the chat, so the roommate can hear everything that's been said. Silence. The webcam went black and the user heard the guy and the couple saying something's happening and then silence again. What basically ended up happening was the roommate attacked the girl, I don't know how or what he did but he did it and the boy updated the user telling him they're going to the hospital and that the police ended up taking the roommate into custody. Can you just imagine watching all that and getting invested in that situation over Omegle? 
Like, can you imagine? Like, I'm just here for some fun, and like, now I'm like, I'm invested. Filling our number three slot is Stacy, shared by Nosferatu Pussy on Reddit. She shared that when she was 18, she went on Omegle just to check it out. She had always been curious about chat rooms. Now the user started talking to a girl called Stacy, who said she thought her boyfriend was cheating on her with girls he was meeting on Omegle, and the two came up with a plan. Now the user would act as a decoy and bait her boyfriend, and then Stacy would basically catch him in the act. Now the user ended up exposing herself on video for this boyfriend, and she didn't think it was a big deal since it was a plan with another girl? Wrong. She started getting various messages from someone else asking for shows and after not replying, it turned into blackmail. She brushed it off because what could a random person even have on her? Rookie mistake. Turns out, Stacy, her boyfriend, and this random user was all the same person. So really, this dude just made up this whole scenario just to get this girl to show her boobs online and screenshot the whole thing. Then the boy found her MySpace, figured out who her boyfriend was, and then told her he'd show her boyfriend the evidence if she didn't strip down for him. She slammed the laptop closed, had an expected anxiety attack, and then ended up telling her boyfriend before he found out from this guy. Guys, never strip for anyone online, not even on Skype, not even with a long distance boyfriend, just don't do it. Do not do it. No, do not do it. Now, and number two other hand deliveries. Get ready for this one. Now, this one was shared by Reddit user Joe Vuel, who said this happened to his 13 year old sister. And the user Joe, I'm gonna just call him Joe, was about 11 at the time. Now, his sister started talking to a guy on Omegle, and she found out that they had the same birthday. And apparently, that piece of information made him completely trustworthy and automatically not a pedo. Alright, guess his standard is low these days. Either way, he wanted to send her a birthday gift, so she told him their home address. Oh no, baby, what is you doing? So after giving him their address, her phone number wasn't even a big deal. She gave him that after that. So he ended up texting her, saying he wanted to have a birthday party for her and that they should meet. He would send her gifts every week, and one day Joe found one of them and found it odd how none of them had any postage on them. Meaning he was hand delivering them, meaning he lived close by. Now now Joe ended up telling their mum and she went to the police and as soon as they mentioned the guy's name, the officer's face just dropped. He went on to say he was familiar with this guy and he was actually a 40 year old mentally unstable tweaker who squatted in a house whose owner had passed away. Now on the way back from the station, Joe saw a man walking away from their mailbox and their mum didn't clock it, but Joe did saying that was him and their mum turned as pale as a ghost. After the police spoke to him, thankfully he never bothered the family again. I'm just getting triggered for all these young people who have made these mistakes because I totally get how you can make this mistake and how easy it is, but I'm just like, ah, uh, like this isn't even the worst of it. There's so much worse out there. Please be safe. The internet is not a safe place. And finally, at number one is the basement. This one's from Reddit said Jack the Brown, whose sister became friends with a guy on Omegle and they exchanged Skype usernames and would just talk on there. No video, just talking. She would ask how he was, but he would dodge all her questions and continue talking and would ask very personal questions about her. Things like like, did they still have a bolt lock on their basement door? And if the spare key was still in the garage where it had always been? Like, how the hell would someone you met on Omegle know that unless they're like a Mr. Robot level hacker? Now, the user lived in the middle of the woods, and none of their neighbors were even close enough to know anything about their spare key or the fact that they even had one. The sister started freaking out and said she was gonna call the police, and then the dude just stopped replying. Now, none of their friends knew about the spare key, just the brother and the parents, and the house only had one computer, so it wasn't an inside family prank either. But that's just so crazy. Like again, from the previous stories, we know someone can find your state if they find out your IP address, but like spare key, bolted lock, like this person had to know this girl which is even more creepy. And that's it for today's video, guys. If you guys can take anything away from this video, it's that you need to be so careful with what you do on the internet and who you speak to. Don't ever give out personal details, no matter how nice the person is. Do not be on video if you can help it, and just be safe. I know we have a lot of older subs, and you guys already know this, but we also have so many younger viewers, and I feel like your mom right now. <laughs> Lol. Stay off the internet, kids. <laughs> As always, I'm your host and resident mommy, Eamon Hassan, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Bye.